Moving on to question number 42. The four digit pin for my credit card can be written as two digit square numbers between 10 and 100. When the four digits, which are all different, are written individually in words, they are in alphabetical order. What is the last digit of my pin? First of all, let's work out all the square numbers or list them out, okay? So it's between 10 and 100, so 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81. These are the possible numbers that we can use. And as it says here, they are all, they are in alphabetical order. So let's just work out this, the, the, uh, the initial letters for each one. So one is O, six S, two T, F for five, Three is T again, six, F, N, six, S, four, F, eight, E, one, O, like so. Okay, there's a four digit pin, and so we're only gonna have to choose two of these square numbers, okay? But importantly, when they are in order, they are in alphabetical order. So let's first work out individually in each square number whether this is possible, okay? What do we mean by that? Well, if you look at 16 here, it's O, S, right? So S is, be, is alphabetically later on than O, so 16 is a possible number we can use. However, if we look at 25, T and F, F becomes before T in the alphabet, so this square number is impossible to be in our pin number. Same thing with 36, S is before T, so we can't use this one. F is before N, for the 49 is possible, 64 once in is not possible, and 81 is possible. So that means that we can choose out of 16, 49, and 81. Okay, now we compare the alphabetical order between each one here. So if I was to say 16 is the first value, O, S, then none of these values, 40, F or E, is after S. So that means 16 can't be the first value here. Same thing with comparing 16 and 81. Let's say I put 81 first and then it is 16. So this would be E, O, O, S. Technically, this is an alphabetical order. However, we have two O's together. So once again, this is not a possible combination like this here, right? So what does that mean? I can only choose one of 81 or 16 to be in my pin number, okay? So in that case, let's look at 49. So F, N, is there any um, alpha before F? Well, they all start after F, right? So that means 49 is gonna be our first one here, F, N. And then if we look at the next one here, um, F, N, E is before N, so it's going to have to be 16. That's going to be the latter two numbers, O, S, like this. So it's 4916 is going to be our pin code here. So the last digit is going to be this 6 value here. Okay, moving on to question number 43. June lives in Applecross and Aki lives in Damesonville. Both live a 10 minute walk from their local train stations, which both lie on the Applecross Vic Town line. And we have a um, chart with a turntable which shows us the times the train leaves and uh, arrives at each sit, um, city. Uh, looking at the next piece of information, Jun leaves his house at 10 to go visit Aki at her house. He must be back home by 4 o'clock and will spend at least one hour at Aki's house. What is the difference between the maximum and minimum time that Jun can spend at Aki's house? Okay, so let's start off with the maximum time, okay? So the most amount of time that she can, he can spend at Aki's house. So if he leaves at 10, that means he arrives at the train station at April Cross at 10 past 10. So let's look at this um, first chart here, April Cross to Victor. What's the first train he can get? Well, he's gonna miss the 10.07 one, meaning he's gonna have to get the 10.27 train from April Cross. And looking at the um, timetable, what time does he arrive at Damesonville? Well, it's gonna be 10.54 like this. So he arrives at the station at this time, does not mean he arrives at Aki's house, right? Because that's another 10 minute walk. So walking 10 minutes, meaning that he will arrive at the, at um, Aki's house at 11.04. That's the, okay. Now let's look at what time that um, June has to leave Aki's house to arrive home by four. So we have to work backwards essentially. So let's say he has to arrive home by four, meaning that he has to be at April Cross Station by 3.50 because it takes 10 minutes to walk home. So looking at the second table now, we have to identify what time, the latest time he can arrive at the, at the uh, station. 3.54 is too late, so it could that be 3, uh, 14 past a minute or 34 past a minute, so we want to be as long as possible. So we're gonna have to choose the time where he arrives at 3.34 p.m. Okay? Meaning that he has to get on the train at Damesonville at 3.07. That's the time he has to be on the train. That's the 
train time he has to get. Okay, so if it's a bit at, at Damesville Station 307, it means Pussy has a 10 minute walk from Aki's house. He has to leave Aki's house at 2.57 p.m. So what that means is that he can arrive at 11.04, but he has to leave by 2.57. So the amount of time that he can spend at Aki's house will be 3 minutes and 53, so 3 hours and 53 minutes. This is the maximum amount of time that he can spend at her house. Looking at the minimum time, well, it says that he'll spend at least one hour at Aki's house. So the minimum time is just literally one hour. So we just have to minus one hour to this here. Meaning that the difference between max and min will be this two hour 53 minutes. Okay, question number 44. So we got a series of pie charts and actually a bar, um, a table. Okay, so at the beginning of March, Susie begins to training for a marathon running event. At the end of each month, from March to August, she records the total distance that she has run since the beginning of March. That's what it means by this cumulative. Cumulative, as we know, means added up by the sum of all the values before. Which one of the following pie charts suitably labeled could represent a comparison of the monthly distances run by Susie? So the pie chart is showing the monthly distance, it's not the total months, right? So we need to identify how many months she runs at each in each month, how, how many distance she runs at each month. So March is 60, April is 122 minus 60, it's just the differences of each one, right? So let's just write them down quickly. 60, 62, 186 minus 1, this is 64, this will be 6, 106, we have 6, uh, 186, and then we have uh, 240. Okay, so these are the distances that she travels in each month, okay? Now, as you can see, it gets progressively uh, further, and the first three months, they're roughly similar um, distances she ran. So from this pie chart, you have to identify that. Just see the roughly similar value. So as you can see here, well, it's good, most likely going to be D, right? Okay, so as you can see, these values here, they're the roughly similar size pie charts, and they get progressively bigger, which follows the rest of the table. Moving on to question number 46. In August, Bill used his new UK-based bank credit card for the first time, and they've got a summary of all the bank details, or so the charges the bank takes. There's no interest in the first 12 months, 2.5 charge on cash withdrawals, 3.5% charge on transactions made abroad. All charges are added to the account at the time of the transaction and then a min free, but some minimum monthly payment of 2% is calculated at the end of each month. Okay, so he bought goods of value, so £2,450. He also withdrew £300 in cash from the UK cash machine. And then on holiday, he used the card to pay £500 worth of goods. What would be the minimum payment for his card use in August? So first of all, we need to identify how much he used in total, including the charges for withdrawals and abroad use. So first of all, he used £2,450. Okay. Next, he withdrew £300. So if it's a withdrawal, you get 2.5% of that, right? So 2.5% of three fifty. 300 will give you £7.50. This will be the extra charge for the withdrawal ones. There's 3.5% charge made on purchases abroad, so 3.5%, and he spent £500 in Spain. So 3.5% of 500 will give you £17.50, like this. So in fact, the total amount of transactions he actually completed in that month was the sum of all these values here. Plus, the actual with the withdrawals, he always drew three hundred pounds, and he also spent five hundred pounds in Spain, like this here, right? Okay, so what's this going to be? Eight hundred twenty-five, eight twenty-five. This is going to be three thousand two hundred and seventy-five pounds. Is the total amount that he withdrew or used in the month of August? Now we have to apply the two percent of that. So two percent of 3,275 will give us a value of £65.50, which the, comp the bank charged at the end of August. Question number 48. A company analyzes five possible cities to build a five-story office building. The total floor area of the five stories required is 3,000 meters squared. And the land area is 600 meters squared. And we got the different prices per meter square, okay, important note, per meter square for different cities here. The cost of, um, what is the difference in cost to build an office between the most expensive and least expensive of the five cities? Okay, so we just need to know the difference between most expensive and least expensive. So 
and because you don't have too much time in the TSA, it's very unlikely that you should work out the price for each different city. That's going to take too long. So it's a bit. It's trying to think of a, maybe a shortcut or identify a shortcut, in which will make help our lives a lot easier. Okay. So the more important thing to notice is the amount of space we need. So we need three thousand for the total land and only six hundred for the uh, land purchase costs. Right. So three. So therefore, so three thousand the total. Flow, Okay, so for this type of question, okay, is because you don't have too much time in the TSA, is I will not recommend trying to work at the total cost for every single city and then finding a difference. It's going to take too long, okay. So we try to find a shortcut which will help our lives a lot. So things to identify as well: the total floor area is three thousand meters squared, whereas the total land area is only six hundred meters squared, meaning that the floor area will influence a lot more of the total price we need to um, pay to to build it essentially. So what I can do now instead is just look at the total construction costs for the total floor area. And you can see here that Jasper is $2,000 per meter square. The differences in the land purchase cost, yes, they are quite, they are different. It's going to be it's like difference of maybe 150. It's not going to be nowhere near affect the total price at the end of the whole construction. Okay. So Jasper's 2,000 is going to affect the total price needed to build the um, skyscraper in Jasper. So we can work out how much it costs in Jasper, okay? So if you work it out, you do get a value which is roughly like 600, 6 million, sorry, $210,000, okay? It's just doing 3,000 times 2,000 plus 600 times 350, okay? Now, same thing for the least or the cheapest one, the least expensive one, okay? So once again, the price of the construction cost per meter would affect more relative to the price of the land, okay? So looking at the cheapest one here, well, it's gonna be Calypso, right? This is $1,000 per meter square. And once again, working at the total price for that, 1,000 times 3,000 plus 450 times 600, you get a price of um, 2 million, uh, no, sorry, 3 million and 270,000 dollars. So this is the most expensive, least expensive, and the difference would be this 2,940,000. Right, and the final one for the 2021 TSA one is question number 50. So the company that I currently work for pays its employee monthly. Paid is the fourth first day of each month or the 26th, whichever one is earlier. Since I joined the company, the dates of the following have been in order. As you can see, there's going to be the dates that they were paid. On what date will I be paid this month? Okay, so first things first, what we have to identify is what month is going to be in, okay? So 24, it's paid 24 in this month, and the next month it was also paid on the 24th. This suggests that there was uh, four first days in between these two paydays. Why? Because if it wasn't, then they would have been paid on the 26th of that month. But if there's four first days between that, those two days, then because we know in one month, the maximum number of days is 31 days, right? So the maximum number of first days that can be will be four first days, right? We can't have five first days because that's gonna be 35 days, okay? However, it suggests that there was four first days in between, meaning that this first month has to be February, right? Because February ends on the 28th, doesn't it? Let's say, let's write it out quickly. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if this first one was 24th, okay, that means we have 25, 26, 27, 28. And then March started on this Tuesday here. So 1, 2, 3. So, and then adding another 7, 10, 17, 24. So as you can see, between the first pay date and the next one, there is exactly four first days in between. Meaning that we started off in February. So that means this second month is March. We have April, May, June, July. Meaning the last month we paid was in August, like such. As we know, there's gonna be 31 days in August. Okay, so just using this like simple diagram here again, so moving on to August. So that means he was paid on the 25th, that was not a 26th, that's going to be a first day again, right, so 25th. And then just adding seven days to each one, I guess seven days will be 32, so that means it's going to be the first, 7, 8, 15, 22. So once again, there's four first days in between here, right, before it hits 27. So that means they're going to be paid on the 26th, 22nd of September.